Hello, Manchester United fans. It's Mick Ruby here from MUFC Realist TV, the voice of reasoning. Have you ever heard that expression, fire, walk with me? Well, we are walking and we are talking. And that means that fire must be Manchester United as a club. So whenever Manchester United moves, the media is following and printing a lot of things. And since it's an international break, we all know what's going to come out there. We need to have a little bit of a conversation regarding this. Right, so nothing has really gone on with Eric Ten Hag. They did the quarterly meeting. They discussed a lot of things regarding where we're heading as a club, with the new custodians in place, with the new operation people. It's getting boring. So fire walk with me. There is no fuel to the fire anymore to add on. Right. But the only thing what is irritating me and most of the United fans is that there is no communication coming up from the club, which is frustrating. Tell us what's going on. We need to know. We demand to know. Rightfully so, you do. But do they really have to? Well, see, Ineos, Sir Jim Rackley promised better communication between the fans and the club. But so far, they're keeping silent to keep the mystery and the PR going. You know what? Because PR sells 100%. Everyone profits about it. So fire walk with me. It is all about Man United and the media and the perception where you want to be, 100%. Now, fire. I would have turned gray hair, but I have some blonde streaks today. And I want to sort of react to what's been printed in the media, especially regarding Thomas Tuchel. Right? Ben Jacobs came out with a tweet yesterday regarding the England manager job that Thomas Tuchel had had a meeting with FA. He is interesting to work, apparently. When they had a discussion with Thomas Tuchel back then when he left Bayern Munich, he was tired. He said, I need a little bit of break. I don't want to take any job right now. But now, come October, Thomas Tuchel is bored. Thomas Tuchel is pushing with his agents to say, find me a job. And media is putting two and two together 100% that it is Manchester United. But there's been no concrete talks. Of course, there was talks in the summer, so it's easy for Man United to just reach out to the agents and say, hey, come and walk with us. But maybe Man United also did identify that he is not the right fit to lead because they want the best-in-class people. So let's nip that in the bud. But Ben Jacobs came out to tweet yesterday as well to say that FA is looking for a new manager after Gareth Southgate. Yes, yeah, so the candidates, of course, is Graham Potter. But why would Graham Potter leave Newcastle? Doesn't make sense. For a toxic England job that you know you're going to get scrutinized. Thomas Tuchel was mentioned in that. 100%. Pep Guardiola as well. Eddie Howe was one of them. And Graham Potter as well. Now, it makes sense that people without a job would take this desperado. Desperado, I call them Desperado, they will take this job. And it makes sense that the agents of these kind of job seekers are putting fillers out there. Now, it's also interesting that, you know, FA and English FA are looking for a replacement for Garen Southgate. So it makes sense. But Pep Guardiola, no, he's, <laughs> he's sitting already on the contract with City. Nobody really knows what Pep's going to do. And nobody really knows what's going to happen with City. Arguably to say they will be relegated or having points deduction 100%. But one interesting story that nobody picked up on was Jurgen Klopp, who was actually linked to the job as well. Well, big up for Jurgen Klopp, by the way. Did fantastically well with Scousers. Well, you know what I mean. Jurgen Klopp has gone corporate. I don't know how this went under the radar, but Jurgen Klopp has accepted a corporate role with the Red Bull group. Overseeing the footballing tactics, the football, the scouting, the everything else. Big up for Jürgen, right? He was absolutely knackered and burnt out his midnight oil being a manager for Scousers. Now, being a manager for Man United is probably also one of the hardest toxic job dealing with all this pressure, with media, with fans flipping. And I've been taking a little bit of a social break. But when I came back to Twitter, reading everything, Oh my God, this fan base have never been so much divided and toxic. You can't even have an opinion. You, you, you need to be forced fed to be either you're ten hog in, ten hog out. You can't sit on the fence because if you sit on the fence, you get blue balls and all that stuff. And it's, it's becoming a little bit of a farcical, you know. We are becoming a little bit like desperado, like this headline, like this 
thumbnail what we have here? Are we desperado? Are we clinging on to something that we don't have power and control over? That is a big question mark that I ask you to put a comment in the non-live comment section. Please do so. Let me know what you think. Who do you think will end up as an England FA manager? Do we give a toss? I don't really care about the FA and the English team. I care about Man United and what's best for Man United at the moment. So as it stands today, there is no communication. It's been, as per usual, media, the gravy train, driving this agenda, trying to divide and conquer as per usual, making you feeling depressed, frustrated. I mean, of course, frustration leads to personal feelings and personal feelings always lead to attacks, right? So instead of taking a break, think about a 360. Don't go and be emotional. Don't write shit that you don't really mean. And be careful what you wish for. I know that we're currently sitting 14th on the table. Premier League is about to kick on. I know that we kind of had a little bit of an injury crisis with the fullback situations. And that is kind of how we are going to manage this. With Mazarawi being out for a hot kind of cardiovascular uh, little minor tweak that he needs to be done. It's not down to the club. It's it's just a heart. And I see some people saying, well, why did we buy an injured fullback? Oh, wow. Well, wait, hang on. It's just a cardiovascular. Like, you know, are you going to continue playing him? Otherwise, he might do a Christian Eriksen, just die on the pitch. So, yeah, I understand that. But what are we doing? What are we doing there? Like, you know, who are we going to play? Dego Daloy can arguably return back to his right side, and natural side. But Mazarabi, for me, has been the most consistent and the best signing this summer, right? So that is a little bit of a warning sign. But we have Harry Amas that can be integrated, 17-year-old, to deputize why he's gone, right? A natural left back. But we also have Malasia. We also have Luke Shaw apparently getting ready. But they haven't kicked the ball. Luke Shaw haven't kicked the ball since, what, February or since the semifinal the Euros as well. And Malaysia hasn't kicked the ball for what? 17 months? So it is a little bit shambles at the day, but are we desperado? How are we going to solve this issue? Let me know in the non-live comment section. Who do you think will be the FM manager? Do you think that Ten Hag will still keep his job? Do you think that INEA should be improving the communication and why? These are the questions we need to ask on MEFC Realist TV as a community. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and we shall see you to the next one. Glory, glory, Man United. Peace. I'm out. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching MEFC Realist TV. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us on the socials.